Hey guys, how are you doing? It's Kepsa here bringing another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Happy Sunday. And today I want to go over more CompTIA A plus questions and uh, quizzes. Obviously, if you're new and trying to know what to do, rate, comment, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Really appreciate it. All right, so I'm going to share my screen and we're going to go over some questions and answers for the A plus exam. All right, so let me share my screen. Screen Uno. All right, so um, first question the main functionality. The main functionality of a BIOS input output system BIOS is to perform initial hardware checks. Every the computer is powered on to start up to the operating system. True or false? This is true. Which of the acronyms listed below refers to a series of basic hardware diagnostic tests performed by the startup BIOS after the computer is powered on? That it would be the post. After replacing a uh, regular hardware component inside the computer case, the update information about specific parameters of a new device is stored where? It's flash memory chip. And flash memory chip. And CMOS RAM, older PCs. A computer's BIOS interface can be accessed by pressing so like this, this one, this one, like it really depends. Like you, I know, I know that every every computer is different. Every manufacturer is different. So you may see, you may press the escape key, you may press the delete key, you may press F one, you may press F two. It really, it really depends. So that's why I'm gonna click on this one. The key set by the motherboard manufacturer for accessing BIOS configuration interface uh, during boot. So it's different for every every um, vendor. So that's why I'm gonna click on that one. Um, and then BIOS configura configuration settings could be could be set to factory default by using a jumper on the model board. Yep, that's correct. Reaching the CMOS battery. CMOS battery saves the date and time, but also the settings of a model board, which is why I'm going to choose that one. So that, that's like a small little battery that, that typically is found on the model board. Uh, it's also found on a laptop, by the way. But yeah. Uh, and then choosing the default configuration options in the BIOS. Yeah, so if you go to the... And I made a video a while back on bio on the on the BIOS, like access, access accessing your BIOS and what settings you have on the BIOS. I made a video like a like two, three years ago about that. Um and basically, yeah, you, you could go into your BIOS and then hit default configuration and then your BIOS will go back to default settings. Simple as that. So that's what that is. All right. Question number six. Which of the following statements is true? Abo uh, aborted BIOS update can be uh resumed by the transaction recovery. Transaction recovery system. A common security measure is to store BIOS or new rewritable, rewritable memory chip. And in Microsoft Windows BIOS hardware configuration settings could be modified device manager. That's not true. Um, aborted BIOS updates could damage the motherboard and render. Yeah, this is correct. So yeah, you could. So that's why you have like when you do like any type of update on a motherboard, any type of update, you got to be careful with what you do. On your computer, you could destroy. You could really mess up your computer it, while it's updating. You don't want to unplug it. Uh, some computers, some computers are like laptops that say, "Please keep the charger or the the thing plugged in while please make sure it has power or always make sure it's plugged in. Do not unplug it or whatever. Just make sure it's powered while you're updating it because you could mess up your computer. You know, and you don't want to do that. It's going to be permanent damage, right? So, all right. CMOS battery. Remember, I talked about the CMOS battery earlier. CMOS battery located in the computer's motherboard allows you to maintain the correct time and date. I just talked about that. Storing the CMOS RAM in, order, in older computers. The CMOS battery also allow for maintaining BIOS configuration settings stored in the CMOS RAM. This is true. So it controls your date and time. Um, it controls your BIOS settings. And if you if you try if you remove the CMOS battery and your date if you, if you go to a computer and that computer for example it says nineteen ninety eight and then you change it to twenty twenty four. And it goes back to 1998, and you keep doing that over and over again. There's something wrong with that computer. It could be the CMOS battery. So that that's basically what it is. it's a small little circle battery. The ones that you'll see when you when you go buy when you go get a um, when you have a uh, 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 a GigaPet. The GigaPets use a circle battery. So like as an example, right? So hopefully that makes sense. All right, which of the following is listed below refers to the features of UEFI? Does not support. DRM support, um, GUI mode, Sierra boot, uh, design as a replacement for the BIOS, and network access. It wouldn't be any of these other ones. 
All right. After completing the, the initial diagnostic procedures and, uh, and allocating system resources, the startup BIOS program checks for information about a secondary storage device that might contain the OS. The list of devices in the order in which they should be checked can be found in a range in the BIOS. This functionality can be accessed via what, where. So that would be uh, boot options. So if you go and, and, and like I said, I made a video on this before on, on, uh, on the BIOS. You could go and, and when you press delete or F12, whatever whatever your default manufacturer BIOS is, you go in there, you go into settings, and then there's this option called boot option. So you could change the which which is which is priority, which goes first on and which goes second, which goes third. So I had a customer that I work with and they thought their computer was messed up. So literally I was on a call with a not a call, sorry, I was on site with a customer. Uh, he had his laptop. And he's like, my, I think my computer's messed up because it's not it's not going anywhere. I turn it on and it just it's a black screen. It doesn't do anything. So you think, you think something wrong with my computer, Kevin? And then I went to the customer. I uh, went to the BIOS, and then I went to the boot options, and I noticed that the uh, the operating system Windows Seven. This is a long time ago. Windows Seven uh, was not being prioritized. It was actually like the boot sequence is set up, or the boot options are set up for the hard drive to be. Um, on, as as a, to boot on, on three instead of one. One would be the main one, right? So I changed that from three to one, and then I rebooted as your configurations on the BIOS, rebooted it, and then the OS was fine and dandy after that. He's like, Kev, you fixed it. You're a wizard. I'm like, no, I didn't, not not a wizard. It's just the settings needed to be changed. That's it. He's like, oh, I didn't know that. So, and then we went, we went our, we went our way after that. We parted ways after them. All right, you're good to go, man. Have a nice day. So yeah, so you could change the settings in the BIOS. Um, and I could actually, if I could go here real quick, just to show you BIOS boot options. Um, yeah, here we go. So yeah, this is the priority. And let me just open this up real quick. Yeah. So yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So you, you could, you could change the boot options. So see, well, this wouldn't be the right one actually. So let me, let me look for one that actually makes sense. Uh, just give me a second. Right here. See where it says boot options right here? Let me go to this one. This one makes more sense. Yeah. So there's boot option one, two, and three. So that customer's uh computer, the the operating system was boot option three. Obviously, it's not gonna boot. It's, it's not gonna go anywhere. It's gonna be in La La Land. So literally, I switched it over to priority one, uh, and which has the Windows boot manager on it and for Windows 7. And then he was fine and dandy after that. So I'll just give you an example of that. So I'm gonna get out of this. All right, so that's why that's the answer for that one. Long explanation, <laughs> but hopefully that makes sense. It sticks with you when you go for an actual test or a quiz. You know why that's the answer, all right? So, all right, this one. Which BIOS configuration option allows you to mitigate the risk of malware infection? So, uh, this would be USB configuration settings. Remember, you don't want people just co going into your PC and then just randomly plugging a flash drive and then trying to get into your, your, your computer and install malware on it, right? Doesn't make any sense, right? So you can actually block USB, uh, USB flash drives. You could do a couple of things on, on the BIOS, but this is this is one that you would do. If that makes sense. All right. So BIOS configurations interface provides a wide range of advanced hardware related options in a modern PCs depending on, on the specific BIOS side and version. These options may typically include viewing a detailed information related to CPU, RAM, storage. Yeah, that is correct. Enabling disabling integrated hardware interface such as USB, audio, NIC, TPM, or integrated graphics controls. That is correct. Configuring the perimeter of CPU, RAM, storage, media, and cooling fans. Yep. Enabling the sale of these functionalities and virtualize. Yeah, so virtualization. So like you could go and enable virtualization. You could go into the BIOS and enable Pixie Boot. You could go enable certain size. So all of the above is correct. I'm going to click on that one. And then this one, uh, UEFI UE function is designed to prevent the loading of malware and authorized OS is called Secure Boot. All right. And this is BIOS passwords to improve the security of the PC. These low-level passwords may, for example, prevent unauthorized users to proceed when the computer is powered on. Supervisor restrict the scope of changes that users can make in the BIOS. True or false? I'm going to click on false. It's not true. Um, and then here, what type of password provides the highest level of permission in the BIOS? It's a supervisor. And then this one, uh, which are the... which? Which of the devices, which of the following could be the help of troubleshooting a system that attempts you to boot into in, in the incorrect device? So disconnecting um, any removable external drive and then checking the BIOS. This happened to me, by the way. So administration tools has nothing to do with it. 
I, I, this is nothing to do with booting. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, why would it? Why would it be that? So, Windows administration tools. This has nothing to do with, with the BIOS. Nothing, there's nothing here that says that says BIOS here. If you look at it, um, and then safe mode troubleshooting is when you press F8 and you go into safe mode. You can actually go to safe mode by going to task manager. More details on startup. It should be around here somewhere. It's been a while. Uh, I believe it's MS config. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so it's been a while. MS config, yeah, safe boot right here. So as if you want to boot into safe mode, but that, that's nothing to do with the BIOS. What is that? What's to do with uh, uh, incorrect intents and booting? Right, it doesn't make any sense. So this this could be any removal device. So like sometimes you'll have a flash drive, or if you put a CD, or you put something on the computer, right? It's gonna try to boot to that first and actually go into your operating system. So that's why this that's the right answer. And then checking the BIOS settings for your boot order, like I said before, right? What if your boot orders are set up incorrectly? What if you're uh, uh getting going to the wrong operating system, or you're going to you're going to a CD or a flash drive instead of your operating system? So that's why that's the answer. Finish. So I got that one right, this one right, got that one right, that one right, this one right, that one right, that one right. I got one hundred percent. So yeah, so that's why that's well, that's pretty much it for me. Uh, BIOS is not that complicated. I, I I don't like to say that it's easy either because if someone that's new, because I was new at the when I first started, you should understand BIOS, uh, boot sequence, um, UEF, UEFI, understand about um. Prioritizing operating systems from the boot sequence, whether it's Windows 10, Windows 11, whatever you're using. Uh, understand about, uh, like I said, Pixie boot, uh, booting into the Pixie, understanding how to enable virtualization, um, your uh, BIOS, and a few other things like your, your your seamless battery, like that controls your date and time and also your settings. So the things are very important. Anyway, with that being said, I hope this helps you out. Hopefully this makes sense. And um, if you have any questions or concerns, let me know. Send, put a comment down below. I really appreciate it. That, that, that helps my YouTube channel when you comment and like my videos because my videos are not getting recommended. So if you if you comment and like, it gives me it gives more engagement and it actually the algorithm actually shares it more to more people that are trying to study the A plus. And if you want to see more videos like that, like this, let me know. All right, later, guys. Take care. Peace.